Hi there friends, it's me, Frugal Green Girl here again. Um, I just wanted to do a quick video, maybe not so quick video since there's a lot of information I have to cover, um, about the different soil amendments you would need. There's so many different things available in the stores that it can be kind of confusing to figure out which your garden actually needs. So I just wanted to address that really quick and hopefully by the end of this you can know exactly what your soil will need and exactly what to get in order to fix the issues that your soil has. Um, the three reasons that you would want to amend your soil is for um, adjusting the pH, so the plant nutrition, so making the soil more nutritious so that the plants will be able to absorb that nutrition, and then the third thing would be the texture. And so in this first video I want to talk about pH because my opinion is probably the most important. Even if you have your soil um, really nutritious in order for the plants, in order for the plants to be able to absorb those nutrients, um, your soil pH has to be around what, what the garden plant likes. Um, if you have too high or too low of a pH, it basically makes it so that those nutrients are unavailable to the plant. So they'll exhibit all kinds of problems, things like stunted growth, you know, decreased vigor, you know, odd colors on the leaves and things like that. leaves and things like that when it's not supposed to be that way. They're supposed to be nice and bright and vibrant green. So, the way that you can test the soil pH is one of two ways. The first way is with a simple soil test. Um, this one says it was $3.27. It was really inexpensive and it not only tested for nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash, the three main nutrients that plants need, but it also tests for the soil pH. And so, um, I usually do these about every other year. Um, but if you wanted to go ahead and do those, you know, you follow the directions, it's really easy. You just throw a little soil in there and add some water, and a little capsule, uh, wait for it to develop and whatnot. And it can tell you whether or not your soil pH is, um, you know, too high, meaning uh, an alkaline soil, or too low, which means an acid soil. Um, basically, pH stands for percent hydrogen, and I know that sounds intimidating. Um, you don't have to be a scientist in order to be a good gardener. But what you do need to know is that there's a pH scale of 1 to 14. 1 being acidic and 14 being alkaline. And 7 is neutral, so anything above 7 is alkaline. Anything below 7 is an acid. And both garden plants prefer a soil pH of about 6 to 7. So either neutral or slightly acidic. If you, when you test your soil and it is in the neutral range or slightly acidic, you're good. If it's really acidic, then you're going to want to raise that pH up. Um, there are a couple of ways that you can do that that I know of. That's not something I've encountered with my yard. Um, the area I live, the soil pH is tend to be around uh, 9, so pretty alkaline. Um, so the two ways that I know of are lime and wood ash to help bring that soil pH up. Um, if you need to bring your soil pH down, now there's my specialty, um, you would want to add um, stuff like peat moss is a good option. Um, cotton burr compost can help bring that soil pH up. These are all natural options. Um, let's see, pine needles is a mulch. You could add um, or even add it to your compost bin to make your own acidifying compost. Uh, which is what the cotton brick compost is. And uh, all three of those have been really effective for me. In the front yard, I have a garden, a berry garden that has a bunch of raspberries and blackberries and things. And um, they prefer an acidic soil. And here in my alkaline soil, I had tried many and they would fail. And I realized that it was because of the soil pH that they were, weren't working out. So um, once I adjusted that and I put a nice big thick layer of pine needles, they really grow a lot better now. Um, they're a little bit less <laughs> pleasant to weed because pine needles are a little bit sharp, <laughs> but it does really work. And it would be even better, I think, if you added it to the compost and then you could add that to your soil and make a really nice acidifying compost of your own. Um, 
If you wanted to just test for the soil pH without buying a soil test kit and you wanted a free option, you know I'm always going to have you covered on the free options. What you could do is just get a glass jar or maybe something out of your recycle bin as long as it's really clean. And um, take a handful of soil and put it in the jar. If you add a half of a cup of vinegar to it, um, vinegar is an acid. Remember back in school, um, let me explain before I go on when you would mix vinegar and baking soda together in acid and an alkaline and they would react by making it all bubbly and fizzy and whatnot. It's basically the same concept. If your soil plus the vinegar react, then your soil is alkaline because the vinegar is acid. So the converse would also work. If you had soil to that jar, half of a cup of water and about a half a cup of baking soda, and there's a reaction that time with some fizzing. Um, then that would mean that you have acidic soil because the baking soda is alkaline. I hope that makes sense. Um, so you could just test your soil pH with regular ordinary items you have right in your kitchen likely. So, um, and if you really wanted to just do a really quick test, that does work pretty well. Or you could do it with the soil test and then you can also know what plant nutrients to uh, add so that you're not adding the wrong kind of fertilizer you know, and actually do more damage than good. So, I think that's about it. So, I'm going to go ahead and record my part two of the series, which is going to be on the plant nutrition and the texture of the soil. So, um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask.